Wesley Ship. Let's bring him on in. I told them I put a seat there, a chair there. I don't think you're going to be in it long. I won't be in it long. So I'll hang on to your, your speedster. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you like to move around a lot. Ooh. As I mentioned, friend of Comic Book Central, we chatted uh, in depth. Man, if you want to get inside the mind of John Wesley Ship, and who doesn't want to get inside the mind of John Wesley Ship, check that interview out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scary place to be. Uh, one thing I do need to ask you about, though, we chatted last year at Terrificon. Um, talked about the new Flash, how they're bringing back some of the characters, some of the actors and actresses from the original Flash. Uh, we talked about that. If you don't mind, we'll see if this works. I want to play a little something from last year. I'm going to channel the Speed Force and go back in time for one year. Great. I ain't putting on that suit. I ain't putting on that suit. Okay. Let's start off with Mr. Ship, you've got some explaining to do. Never say never. <laughs> I remember you put on the suit. When I, when, when I did the last scene from the 1990s show, you know, with Mark Hamill, the tre last uh, Trial of the Trickster episode, and we were, it was five in the morning, we were in Southeast LA, as we were always shooting, right, trying to get the last shot before the sun came up. And it was the very last shot of the very long season, and I took both wings and threw them on the air, and I swore I would never get back in another superhero as soon if I didn't have to. And lo and behold, you know, but he got those wings. This <laughs> time, did. I'm going to get something. I'm going to get that helmet. Mark's not getting the nice. helmet this time. You got it. Well, I mean, okay, granted, when we, when we spoke last year, obviously you didn't know where they were going. Know. They, they keep know. things under wraps so well. Um, I don't think they knew. Really? Yeah. I don't Even think they when they introduced your character as Henry? No, no, no. Because no, everybody no, thought no, you no. were going to be Jay Garrett. You thought they knew well, it might be Jay Garrett when you got when you were in the cast. That's who everybody wanted me to be. I would. I, I didn't want to be uh, because I felt that would be too on the nose. It would be like a, you know <laughs> another comparing me with me 25 years later. I was like put these two pictures side by side now. But um, yeah, but but since I got to play Henry Allen, and Henry Allen was the humanity and the real human element in a superhero action adventure show. Then I felt like I got to ground myself. Plus, it was a completely different retelling, wasn't it? It was, uh, I mean, you know, for those who, how many remember the original show? Well, you know, Emmett Walsh was not wrongfully imprisoned for killing Priscilla <laughs> Pointer in front of a 10 year old me. You know, that's the modern telling. And when I found out that that was the Henry Allen story now, I thought, if they come to me, that's the part that I would like to play. Having grounded myself in that part with those very truthful, non-action adventure, father-son, heartfelt moments, now it's kind of fun to transition into uh, a superhero character. I have to tell you a fun thing. I don't think this is a spoiler, but Grant and I were doing... Uh, That's what I love when you say that because there's so much potential there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grant and I were doing a scene uh, uh, with me as Jay and him as Barry, and so we're running lines we're used to relating as Henry and uh, and Barry, you know, very uh, heartfelt, very vulnerable, very real. Well, Jay's completely different, you know, and on uh, in league with Andrew Kreisberg, we want to make him as different as possible. And so, uh, Grant and I are running lines before a scene. At one point, he just shakes his head and starts laughing. And I was like, "What's the matter?" He said, "This is so bizarre." He said, "But it's cool." He said, "It's cool, but." Doing these scenes with you, it's like doing scenes with a different person. So we're looking forward to, uh, and when you're working with someone as great as Graham, and it's fun. Now I get to learn, we get to learn each other all over again with different character relationships. So that's a very unique uh, situation to be in. When did you first realize you were going to be Jay Garrick moving forward. And, and I say that because you're still Henry. I mean, and we'll talk about that with Flashpoint, but when did you realize, yeah, I get to, I get to suit up again. Or, oh no, I have to suit up again. I don't know which way it would have gone. You know, these guys are so busy. These guys being Greg Berlanti, Andrew Priceberg, Jeff Johns. I mean, obviously it's a great time to be a, a, a superhero fan, right? Because there's so much going on. So many, it's a smorgasbord 
of superheroes. But, uh, you know, so they, uh, their minds work so fast and they're spinning out story on so many different platforms so fast that the information doesn't always get where they think it's gotten. So I go up in March to do the last four episodes of season two. I figured Henry Allen was coming to the end of his usefulness in the show. Because my job, I felt, Susan, season one, was twofold, to graft the 1990 audience onto the 2014 effort, and also to bring Barry from having gotten these powers to the point where he was comfortable assuming them. Once he's comfortable assuming them and coming into his own, Henry Allen's job pretty much story-wise is done. So I expected that, that, you know, that Henry would be drawing to a close. Then I went to my first costume fitting. And uh, can I stand up with these moments? Please do, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, knew it. I, knew it. I, got, I go to my first... We're going to be over under on seven minutes. I, guess, I go to my first costume fitting, and they bring out this brown prison suit that's shredded. And I'm like, okay, Henry's out of prison, and besides, what happened to it? And I, but I try it on, and I'm fitting, you know, with Kate. And she says, of course, you know, the helmet is, is with the costume department. And I go, <laughs> the helmet. And she just goes, oh my god, they didn't tell you? They haven't told you? I said, I'm the man in the iron, in the iron, what do they call it? Mask. Mm -hmm. The mask. And she went, you didn't hear it from me. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> so I went, well, that's pretty cool. That is great. And so I got makeup tests for the beard and all this stuff. It was great. So then in between scenes, uh, Jesse and Grant and I are sitting around. And they said, so you hear what you're doing next season? I said, yeah, I'm the man in the iron mask. And they're going, yeah, yeah. And I stop, because that's all I know. And they go, that's all you know? I say, there's more. <laughs> and they say, you're Jay Garrick. I said, get out of town. They said, no, the whole thing is, when the iron mask comes off, there's Barry, looks just like his dad, and it turns out that you're the real Jay Garrick. And the first thing I thought was, Another superhero suit. <laughs> but it's a great, it's great storytelling. And then, of course, you know, I, I, I shot an email to uh, Greg, to Berlani, who I know from Dawson's Creek days. And I said, you know, I'm hearing these uh, rumors about various characters I may or may not be playing over the course of the season. Uh, he said, oh my god, I thought they would have told you. I didn't tell him that he is they that would have told me. But you, you are the they that would have told me no. You really need to start showing up for the production meetings. Man. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Everyone else knows about these. Yeah. It's like if the costume fitters are knowing these things. Yeah, you should probably show. Them. They're, the, they're the first ones. They know way before we do. Um, and so, um, so then I talked to him on the phone, and Andrew came up uh, from LA, and we had a long conversation. And when they said when they when they mapped out the arc that the penultimate episode, Henry dies. Traumatic event, boom. Then we pick up Henry's death at the, at the beginning of the season finale. And then before that hour is through, I'm revealed as the man in the iron mask, and it's revealed that I'm the real Jake Eric. And I was like, well, what can I say? Take me out of the equation. That is great storytelling, you know? I mean, and it's also fan expectation because as Joe said, you know, people wanted me to be Jay Garrick from the very beginning. And now that I've been Henry, I feel like I can, I can, I can put on a suit again. It'll be okay, baby. I hope. Did you have any You'll let me know whether it's okay. <laughs> Did you have any concerns about getting in a suit again? Because I know that was, a, uh, that was a big issue back in the original Flash. Did you have any concerns, or was it just all excitement knowing the folks you're working with? You know, it was so funny, because Danny Bilson and Paul DeVito, producers of the first show, they didn't understand my problem with the suit. Now, anyone who came up to me and went after I had it on and watered or pulled off a glove and it would be full of sweat up to there, they'd just dump it out. They'd know that the problem was physical, but I got so that I dreaded gluing it to that suit. They don't have to use glue anymore for the cow. And all that, I was like dreading it, and they thought it was psychological. They said, we almost hired you a psychologist to help you out with the suit. And I'm like, it's not psychological, it's physical. But no, watching the new suit and the fact that there's an undersuit now and a leather outer shell, so they, the operative information here being is that they can clean it. The first four suits built 
at a cost of $100,000 back in 1990 to build those four original suits. But they were one piece. They couldn't be cleaned. They were crumbling because I was sweating through them. They'd hang them in my trailer, spray them with Lysol, and they'd still be wet and sticky when I put them on at 5 a.m. the next morning, whenever it was. Well, now they got smart, see? They have an undersuit, which they can wash, and then you put on the outer shell. Plus, the advantage that Jay Garrick has is is uh, you know he doesn't have a cowl, so you lose 40% of your body heat through your head, so it's not going to be as hot. But I'm 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 in doing being digitally scanned in the suit for uh, action thing or whatever figure in L.A. I flew out there to do that, and and, and they're like bringing me water, and they're like, are you hot? Are you hot? I said, I could. Are you kidding? I could stay in this thing all day after what I went through 25 years ago. This is Christmas. <laughs> Is this your first action figure then? Because I don't think they did anything with the original they didn't. flashlight. They so didn't. this is your, congratulations. Well, we'll see, we'll figure. see. All that, I know I've been For scanned. Sure. Again, you didn't hear any of this from me. <laughs> this, is, this is a <laughs> Legends level. See, this is a <laughs> Legends <laughs> level. I learned my, I learned my lesson. I think, from, I think you're good with that. Legends thing. Um, Tom Cavanaugh, um, kind of, I mean, when you think about the Flash, when we do these, these multiple characters, so you come back one season, you're another character, did you kind of, Get any tips from him on how? Because he did it so brilliantly, playing the same, you know, different versions of the same guy. Did you talk to him, or do you just want to go? No, I need to be over here and do my own thing. You know, I already had it built in. It's amazing how the the different uh, iterations of the Flash that I've done have fed one the other. I mean, the fact that I was Barry and I was in that suit and I knew what that's like. And then here's this new young actor, Grant, who I respect and admire and like so much and want so badly for him to succeed at the beginning before we knew whether it would take off or not. And so that, that's kind of a built-in father-son relationship. So that fed our father-son relationship, Henry Berry relationship. Now, it's so, so the, he knew me as Barry from having watched uh, the OG Flash, they call it. So then Henry was learning me as a different guy. I think what's funny for him about it now that I'm playing Jay is Jay is much closer to my Barry from 25 years ago in terms of his energy, his demeanor. He knows he's a superhero. He's the original superhero. He's a lot cooler in temperature than Henry. You know, he doesn't even know if he trusts this kid. He's got a job. To do. You know, I've got the speed force. It's my legacy. Don't screw it up. You know, yeah, I look like your dad. Really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of a cool, much cooler attitude. So actually, I'm, I'm drawing on, in fact, JC knows this. I went back and I watched what I did in the 1990-91 show because I wanted to remember how I played a superhero back then, you know? And I thought that probably if I reminded myself, I could use things that I saw and pull it forward into now being the Golden Age Flash. But it works together perfectly. It works together perfectly. They call me the original Flash. It blows my mind. So now you're the original original. I call it the original Golden Age. <laughs> and I had a little detour through voicing Professor Zoom. Yeah. You know, it's uh, just as long as it's not old or classic, right? We've just said <laughs> this is what we've talked you know, about. Older, older. As long yeah. as you don't say that. Original is good. Old, you can, <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> necessary. <laughs> I won't, you know. But, senior, you know. maybe. Senior, senior, senior flash. I got it. No, no, no. No, OG. OG. OG's fine. OG's fine. Let me turn up to the crowd. We've got, uh, let's pick some questions here. We'll repeat the questions as we come up because I know in the back it gets a little bit difficult. Uh, right here in front of the flash. Yeah, do you have any uh, favorite villains from either of the series? Favorite villains? Mark. Early Come on, early. Mark Hamill. Yeah, absolutely. I will never forget when we were, because we were like, that first series, I always tell people, it took us nine days, two units running simultaneously to get an hour of television in those days. They can do it in eight days now because they can do so much more in... Uh, post-production, right? But in those days, when we wanted to blow something up and have the flames shoot 35 feet in the air, we had to really do it. So we were there hours and hours and hours. Our transpo people were putting in 25 and 26 hour days. It was outrageous. So we were dragging through these episodes. Here comes Mark. 
You know, he is so ready in character as the trickster, bouncing all the wall, off the wall with energy. You remember people who remember the trial of the trickster when he's in the padded cell at the end? Nobody tricks the, you know, that, that part, you know, he comes right up to the glass, you know? He dislocated his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the energy that this guy had. So it was great to do two episodes with him back then. And then when, I, when he found out he was coming back to the new show, he was like, I, I thought I was going to be a friend of Dr. Henry Allen's, maybe an associate. He said, I, I didn't know what they were going to do with me. I could barely work the unitard 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was brilliant, wasn't it, what they did, because they let him be the sort of poisoned, in Iron Heights for all those years, all that madness had turned to poison, but they still got the young trickery by casting a young Flash wannabe. That's the genius of our producers. Yeah, who was your favorite? Who asked me that question? Did you ask me who was your favorite? Uh, same, same with me. It's Mark. My favorite I mean, my, hard to beat, right? Right, definitely. Right? And by the way, how about, how about the Star Wars? How, I mean, was that the greatest silent moment in the, in, the, in the history of television? I told him, I wrote him, and I was like, that whole thing, the way they built it, and up the side of the hill and all, and you're waiting, and the music, and the this, and then the two of them, and he turns around, and I'm like, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's like gonna be one of those great, great moments in cinematic history. It's gonna be remembered, I mean, and what, and what they managed to convey, and I'll shut up here in a minute and let you ask another question, but I'm getting off on the actor thing. They had to convey so much without any words, and it, ha it couldn't be overdone. It's like, what does she want from him? Is she asking him to mentor her? His reluctance to get back into the whole thing, maybe a little bit, you know, to, you know what passed between them in that moment was just pure cinematic gold. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So the prevailing fan theory is that uh, the TV shows are one world and the movies are another. And the one character that has the potential to cross those worlds would be the Flash. Uh, is that something that might happen? Is there any truth to that? Can you talk about that? You mean uh, the actors between the movie world and the TV world? Yeah, so like like the Flash, like Greg Dustin's Flash, meaning like Ezra Miller's Flash, for example. There are some whispers about some people maybe wanting that to happen as it stands currently. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you need to say that out loud. <laughs> they may not listen to us, but they will listen to you. <laughs> so, no, no, but I got that kind get of. On the, get on that. Get on No, believe me, they're combing social media. They're looking to see what their reactions are. They are extremely responsive. I think part of the reason they worked my way around to being Jay Garrick is that so many of, of the audience, that was the character they wanted me to play to begin with. So they got me there. It took two years, but they got me there. Um, I, think, I think the from what I'm observing is that they want to keep the universes separate right now. They want the movie, rightly or wrongly, their philosophy is the movie universe is one universe, the TV universe is the other. Now, Marvel has sort of combined, haven't they? Yeah. And done it very successfully. There may be another instance in where they that they're one jump ahead and DC will catch up. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a different philosophy. Yeah, I don't think DC should be afraid to, to copy Marvel's formula. It's successful. Plus, you guys, thanks. <laughs> Plus, people are watching on so many different platforms now. People are watching our show on their phone, their watches. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? It's not like you don't necessarily have to go to the movie or go to the TV. All the lines of demarcation are sort of melting into each other. That's kind of a bad analogy. But it might happen. It could happen. Anybody back here? What's going on back here? <laughs> questions? Comments? Tomatoes? <laughs> You know, it's been discussed uh, with me, I can't give anything away. But the fact that I'm Jay Garrett now opens up, you know, and it was coming to an end. I mean, I love those scenes. Every time we do one of those father-son scenes, it would be very, you know, I mean, we really get choked up when we get into them. Every time we do it, I'd say, that's it. There's no other way to play that father-son scene. And they can always come up with another way. If you were my son. I had to flash were my son, I'd tell him. He's a hero and he's saving a lot of lives.
else, you know. And I think, wow, that's another way. Put it in the subjunctive. Subjunctive is way. Well, we were coming sort of to the end of that, and I kind of got the feeling that if you kept playing those funny, it was going to be, Ugh! you know. <laughs> so I didn't want to go there. And, uh, and I love the scene, the last scene between Henry and Barry, when Henry's going to, has to and Barry's decided to get electrocuted. He's going to get the powers back, and he's running out of Star Labs. He announces, I'm going to do it. His father didn't want him to. And I follow him out into the hallway, and uh, we have that one scene where I have that long cross where I'm saying, I may not have been around to teach you how to drive. I may not have been around to teach you how to drive a car, to choose what college you want to go to, but I all, I'm proud of you and I always try to understand you. <laughs> <laughs> that scene, I think we're headed for another moment. But what does he do? He goes, I know when I'm learning. You know what I mean? I mean, this is a very different gesture from this. And I don't know, it's like an iceberg ran down my spine. It's like, as Henry, there's got to be the feeling that dad, how, how many dads in the room that the dads have when the, well, suddenly you realize that your kid doesn't need you quite in the same way anymore. And I thought, what brilliant writing that was, um, uh, because it wasn't long after that that it, I got the hand through the chest. <laughs> Thanks for that question. Yes, I have uh, seen <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, I've been hearing uh, talk about there being a musical episode. Yeah. Of the yeah. Uh, and I'm uh, wondering if you'd be participating in that in terms of singing songs or if we could get a little preview or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it was inevitable because. We've all been on Broadway. We've all done musicals. It's a question of who they choose to use. You know, I don't know. Can I see Jay or Henry? What, uh, what would happen? Uh, what would his voice sound like? I have no idea. Clearly, they're going to take advantage of Melissa and Grant. That's going to be magic. You know, who, el who else comes in and sings a line here or there? I, I have no way of knowing, but it's been announced that there will be, I believe, two. Uh, that, that would be musical episodes. But we have musical episodes anyway. I'm telling you, when we're in the middle of shooting, you look over to one side, and over here in this corner, there's uh, Jesse teaching Grant a new tap step. No, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go over here, and well, 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 here comes Tom giving Carlos a ride in the wheelchair. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy, but I think that kind of affection, hi, Charlotte. That kind of affection uh, shows and reads on the show. Aren't you the the birthday? Isn't there a birthday group? Didn't your well, there, yeah, yeah, we have a birthday, birthday. right over there. And yeah, okay. right in Birthdays, front. Right yes, here. happy yeah. birthday! <laughs> I, I hope it's a good one. I hope it's a good one for you. Anyway, yeah, so musical episode. I don't know. It's, a, it's very funny. Do you guys remember the uh, one in which Caitlin sang? Or rather, she yeah. was drunk yeah. <laughs> at the karaoke. Yes. Well, I, I wasn't sure if she was kidding or not, but apparently uh, Danielle can't sing. <laughs> and so uh, I remember uh, when we were filming Henry's death, uh, Andrew was on the set, and in between takes, when he wasn't crying, uh, he said to Andrew, he said, are you going to make Danielle sing? You know, and uh, Andrew goes, ah, probably not, probably not. But I don't know about the rest of us. Yes, sir. I enjoyed your work in general hospital. Actually, I did. That's one of the only ones I didn't do. But it was Guiding Light, As the Girl Turns, one All My Children, One Life. Two years ago, before they did with All My Children. You mean you mean the most recent one? Just one, one, one Life to Live, Eddie Ford. Yes. Yes. He was a He was an abusive dad. He was a abusive dad. Yes. So, what's the difference between like the flag versus like? So uh, so yeah. Well, I mean, by the time we got into the 2000 to 2010, which is when I did One Life to Live, it uh, you know, the budgets had so shrunk, and they were about to go off the air. And we were just doing collections of scenes, and so we got our troupe together and just and, and, and tracked down our storyline, you know, to make it. But uh, but in the early days before that, uh, when I started, it was shooting an hour of television a day. 
Well, I just told you, it took us nine days mm -hmm. to do an hour of television. It takes them eight days to do the new Flash show. And we would, we would be doing 50 or 60 pages of dialogue a day. When I was on Broadway, the year after The Flash, doing Dancing at Luna, so they asked me to come on to All My Children and play another despicable character, <laughs> Martha Jones. And, uh, and they, 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 they were trying to get some days off, so they put a sixth show to tape during a five-day week. Now, I'm doing eight shows a week on Broadway, and my character was hitting uh, the front burner. Crazy! I would, I'm really terrible. Where are the kids? I would, I just want to do it. I beat up this woman, you know, we hit each other with frying pans and burn each other with crazy. And I cried because she didn't love me. But it was this, it, just talking, 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 crazy stuff. And doing the show eight times a week, going back and forth. And I think I maxed out it. I had 45 pages of uh, scenes to shoot in between my two performances of day, on matinee day. And I, and I hemorrhage the vocal cords up. But the difference is that in daytime, you were doing an hour a day. You had to fly with your first impulse. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. Quick story. I remember early lesson, Robert Newman, down Guiding Light. We were sitting there doing a scene, and they're taping it. And he's supposed to be this real cool guy, you know, and he's talking about that whatever it was cost me 50,000 bucks. Well, he says, that so-and-so cost me 50,000 ducks, um, bucks, and uh, so on and so on. And he kept going because the rule in theater is you don't yell cut in movies. and film, you, know, you let the director yell cut. Well, at the end, the director said, okay, that's it. Moving on, next scene. And it went on the air then. <laughs> <laughs> so we learned. If, we, if you ever said 50,000 ducks, you better go, oh, God, oh, gee, oh, oh, shit, you know, and say some cuss words, which I won't say. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And, uh, because no way they could put that on the air, right? right? Did I answer your question? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you answered like five of them. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? Over here. Yes, sir. Uh, La 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 la. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't say, but I just said, so I hope you got my meaning. <laughs> yes. For the fans, what are you looking forward to for seeing uh, most about season three of Flash and the next season of Legends of Tomorrow? <sighs> Well, it's just the way we continue to spin out and that they're really now getting off on the overlapping uh, uh, shows. Now, you know, obviously Grant's going over to Supergirl. Uh, they're going to be crossovers with Legend. Legend is doing the JSA. We don't know what version. Obviously, I'm wondering if I will be. I have no information that I am <laughs> going to be at this point. Okay. Because I've read that, well, John Wesley Ship said he was going to be on Legend. No, John Wesley Ship did not say that. But I think I we said that at Trip Car last year. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I do know that, you know, in the comic books, I mean, you know, the JSA is, is my thing now that I'm Jay Garrick. So how they'll utilize that, they are structuring contracts on Berlani shows so that they can, if they choose to, and I don't know that they are going to, <laughs> but should they so choose, they can move us like, like chess players on a board between, I mean, what a great time, number one, to be an actor in this world and to be viewers in this world, to be fans. How many were here were, were comic book fans before being a comic book fan was cool? Or don't you guys feel vindicated? It's <laughs> like now 180,000 people taking over San Diego and you're walking around going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, your comments dovetail, though, into something we talked about last year, too, because we mentioned um, uh, Paul DeMeo and Danny Bilson, the original showrunners on your show, uh, the original Flash show. Uh, we talked about the fact that they might be writing an episode. Now that seemed like it was going to happen last season. I had a chance to talk to them on Comic Book Central. They said 
they're waiting for the email to come back. They they are chomping at the bit to write something. I'm just curious if there's if that's still a possibility. It's something that's still churning uh, in the in the engines. But as I said, now with how many shows have we got going now that, that they're doing? I don't know. And, and Greg Berlani is a new father, and you know, I don't know how they're you know. But I know it's something that they have said that they want to do. I know it's something that Danny and Paul would be receptive to doing if they were asked. I hope they get to do it. I hope it's an episode that I'm in. Isn't it, could it be a Jay Centric, Jay Garrett Centric cool? episode? Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that, that be, be legends? I have no knowledge of this. You know, that would be... But they're, they're amazing storytellers. Yeah. I mean, because even think of something that... Because when I talked to them, they said they're doing things now that they that you guys could never get away with uh, in the 90s. Um, you know, think of Gorilla, Gorilla Grug, King Shark. I mean, all these things that you can do now. And so to turn be able to turn them loose would just be fantastic. Yeah, we had a 25th anniversary uh, celebration of Flash 1990 at a theater in Los Angeles. We had a red carpet event, and Mark was there, Joyce Heiser, a, a, a lot of the people from the show. Amanda didn't make it. I'm sorry, Amanda couldn't be there. But all of the special effects guys, Danny and Paul, were there. Andrew Kreisberg came. Because Andrew there. Kreisberg was an assistant on the back lot at Warner Brothers when I was doing Flash 1990. When I met him to film the pilot of 2014, Andrew, first of all, was about this tall. And so I went up to him and I was like, you know, hello, meeting my boss for the first time. And he said, actually, we've already met. I'm like, we have? He said, oh yeah. He said, I was an assistant when you were doing the Flash back in 1990 on the back lot at Warner Brothers, and I totally invaded your space and fanboyed out on you. <laughs> I'm like, was I nice? <laughs> Apparently I were you? Apparently I was. <laughs> I haven't been fired yet. That's good. That's a good thing. So. No, and when you, when you talk about things, um, have they talked even maybe about bringing the trickster back on? Because, you know, now, now you are a speedster. Have they, you know, have you, no, that you to me. that's something I would love to do. <laughs> I'd love to get involved now with Mark with power on that level. It's like, you know, it's like even then as Henry Allen, I was like, just just let me throw one swing at it. <laughs> <laughs> let me just, just, I don't even have to connect. Just let me, you know, but that wasn't in the cards. Uh, but maybe as Jay Garrick, you know, we could get into it. And I think that would be a trip. In front of the show, Alex Desaire. I mean, you know, had a chance to talk to Alex Desaire. Is there any... I mean, you guys still chat? <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be a non-answer right there. <laughs> How much Coke you got in that bottle there? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> that would just be a cool episode with him and Cisco. I agree with you. Yeah, just <laughs> Joe thinks it would be a cool idea. <laughs> just trying to get in the mind of John Wesley Ship, seeing if we can get a little something out of here. What are you most excited about? About going into this coming up season? How many episodes have you shot already? For this season? Yeah, well, I, can't, I mean, how many have they shot? I don't know if you've been in there I think or not, they're but... shooting. They're shooting. They're in the middle of shooting episode four. Okay. And I have two in the can already. Okay. And I'll be coming back. Again, that's no secret. Well, we okay. So we know you're playing Henry coming in. So and Henry and Jay. So what are you most excited about going through the season? I know you don't know everything yet. We certainly don't want to get any spoilers. But just from an acting standpoint, what are you most interested in? Tackling? I'm most interested in what I touched on earlier. It's like we got we had an, a phenomenal. It's one of the most special working relationships. When, when we would walk into that jail cell cubicle and pick up those phones and start talking to each other, something, I can even say it, it sounds terribly sentimental, uh, uh, but, I, it, but something magical happened. And it's something that I will always treasure. Thank you. And uh, now, I get to step back and I get to re-explore this whole world, my relationships with everybody, from a completely different standpoint. But you get to be a husband. You get to be a husband, you get to be a dad in a different sense. Do I? <laughs> Do I? The wife's alive. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> He's tricky. You know, I've worked with this guy. How much coke is in that You have to be very careful. You know, but, but it's great, and I've already told you that, that Grant and I had a scene together with me as Jay, but it's, we're really, 
The danger with doing series television is that you do a scene with somebody so often, it's like, it's like you and I are just meeting, right? So I'm trying to get every physical cue that I can from you to find out who you are or, or what, you know, how you're reacting to me, if you think I'm a jerk, you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to pick that up, you know. And, but, but when you work together for a long time, you get, it's like with friends or whatever. It, sometimes the danger is you can just start taking each other for granted. Well, Grant and I right now are back to this. You know, because he doesn't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how he's going to react to it. And that, as an acting challenge, is, is great fun. Do you get to improv at all? Or do you, I mean, are you, because I know like on shows like Firefly, like they, they have their stick to the script, that you don't go off those words. Do you get, is there a little leeway? We have the best of both worlds. We can, if we want to. Uh, they're very respectful of our input, but we don't have to. It's like, you know, people would say, how would you and Grant get that much emotion into your scenes? And I would say, when I read them, I'm like, oh, I'm, uh, you know, because <laughs> you know, they're so beautifully written. Uh, the problem then becomes not getting swept away by the emotion in the scene. Because if we have too much emotion, if we're up there feeling, then you guys, what do we leave you guys? You guys, we gotta leave some blanks for you guys to mm -hmm. feel in. But to answer your question, yeah, I've changed things. You know, I've, I've thought, particularly had a real difficulty. What did you guys think about Henry Allen getting out of jail and leaving town on the same day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a hard sell. Don't ask my wife that question. That, <laughs> went, through, that went through several different versions to try to, I knew we had to make it about, rightly or wrongly, Henry had to feel that that was the best thing for Barry at the time. And it kind of worked because Barry was going through the whole episode saying, I hurt the ones that I loved the most. Mm -hmm. And so, and I also thought, well, people are still kind of seeing me as the original Flash. If I can marry father, son, and original Flash, new Flash, and say the line, can you be everything that you need to be with me here? Meaning me, Henry, meaning me, John Wesley Ship. Well, obviously, he said he couldn't say yes. And so it was clear. And so I tried to get out. I thought it would resonate with the viewers that way, that we could get away with it. It's got a lot of blood. But, uh, <laughs> you win a few, you lose a few, right? right. <laughs> get some more audience questions? We've got a few minutes left yet. Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, loved the dynamic and chemistry with you and Amanda Pays in the original. Uh, and I was hoping, I have two parter. One, maybe if you have some favorite moments from working with her on the, uh, your original Flash series. And also, she also was brought back yes. uh, as a character in uh, the new Flash. And have you two compared notes on the experience? Well, you know, it's the same thing with me and Mark when he came back, you know. I mean, we were riding home. We, we rode in the, took the same car together uh, back, to the, back to the hotel. And he was saying, wow, how unusual it is to get to revisit a project 25 years later and hand it off to the next people. And I would go further. I'd say not only that, but be given vital characters to play that are making contributions. The great thing about Manda is, you know, there was so much, we were like an early CSI show, right? Yeah. And so she had, uh, thank you, a lot of uh, techno babble. And so who better to say that than Amanda? Didn't it just sound delicious just, you know, in, in her accent? It was a brilliant, brilliant idea. Yeah, we loved our little brief flirtation, you know, before Henry got snatched, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, it was great to see her again. Yes. Birthday girl. Is there going to be any other superheroes in the third season? There, you know, they're, they're, they've already announced, keep your eyes peeled on blogs and things. There, there's going to be, uh, Barry will always be the speedster on the show. Obviously, there are other el elements. We've got Wally. We've got Jay now. We've got, uh, but, but we, they're, they're spinning out, what is it, the Rogues Gallery? They keep adding, adding to that. Violet Bean, she's yeah, yeah, she's yeah. They've already announced. They've already announced some villains that are on uh, on, so on that, are, that are coming. Yeah, yeah. And more grot. More grot. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, Joe, I think you're safe on that one. Joe feels like there will be more grot. <laughs> From, from everything I read on the internet, like, yeah. it's just so trustworthy these days. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's, God, that works so well. I wish we could have done Grot in 1990. Yes, sir. 
Oh, would you be open to your Flash and Grant's Flash appearing in the same episode? Oh, you mean from 1990? Yes. You know, I was horrified to read Andrew say at San Diego Comic-Con that they initially considered putting me back in the original suit. <laughs> and I was like, no! Well, I love my new suit, man. I love my new suit, my Jake Eric suit. Um, who knows what they have in store? You know, they're constantly thinking and inventing. You know, it was very funny because in, in 2015 at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, Andrew had said, they said, do you ever, can you ever see John's Flash and Grant's Flash? And he said, well, you know, I'll never, and this is before they knew I would be Jay. And they said, well, I'll never say never. He said, but how meta can you get before the whole thing falls apart? You know, so that's their balance right now. He said one other thing that's really funny. They said, in a race between Supergirl and Flash, who would win? And without pausing, he said, the audience. <laughs> Took his mind, dropped his mind, and that was the end. <laughs> yes. Have a few more questions. Yeah, we got a couple things because I can't see everybody who's been raising their. Ah, uh, one right over here. Um. So I know you kind of answered a little bit of a question like this, but um, season one there was only Barry. Season two now there's Barry and Jay and maybe Wally and Jesse. But uh, they've been really expanding on speedsters or people who are speedsters in the comics but aren't necessarily on the show. Has there um, been any talks at all about um, Bart Allen either appearing on The Flash or maybe Legends of Tomorrow in an episode set in the future? All I know is that it's bubbling up. A lot of what I said happens on the show bubbles up from the fan base, bubbles up from the audience. And I'm beginning to see a lot of that bubbling up on Twitter on Facebook, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised if at some point, in some version, he shows up. If you want it, tweet it. Right. If you want it, <laughs> if you want it, tweet it, write them. They're very responsive, you know. They're that wonderful combination between, they're going to write the, the show that they want to see, but at the same time, they are listening to you guys, so, you know, don't, don't feel like you're not, you're not being heard. We have time for one more question, so make it a really, really good one, because we're going to go out on this one. He's got a really, really good question. Right over here on the left, yep. Um, I know you can't say who's going to be in the JSA, but can you say like who you, what Golden Age characters or characters from Jay's storylines that you want to show up, like Joe and Garrett? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Pace. I think Joe, the Joe would like to see Amanda Pace. <laughs> yeah. see Amanda Pace. Yeah. One more, one more quick one. Come on. Yes, sir. One Is it going to be like a Jay Garrick specific episode, like in Earth 2? Gorilla Grodd's on Earth 2 also. Well, I'm on Earth 3. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still a Jay Garrick. He was trying to say Is the it. idea being tossed around for there to be, you know, a, a, episode or a, a like Saturday two part crossover or something? There, I think about all those things. There, I think about, again, if you want to see it, I like that. I'm going to use it. If you want to see it, it, tweet it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. <laughs>